Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is National Master Laurent Belakis, and today I have a special guest. Uh, her name is Sarah Zbarski. Welcome, Sarah. Thank Hi. you. And today we we're going to talk a little bit about her her chess career. How did she got involved in chess? And we also analyze uh, a game played by her at Princeton Day School in New Jersey. So tell us a few things uh, about yourself. When did you start playing chess? And what inspired you to play chess? I started playing chess around, like, I think last year is when I started taking it seriously and going to tournaments. The first tournament I went to was the Pennsylvania State Championship. And how was the first tournament for you? It was nervous, nerve-wracking, and but I liked it a lot. I lost all my games. I still remember when I was uh, very young, seven, eight years old, and I went to my first tournament, and I lost all my games, and uh, it, it, I felt pressure too, but I didn't quit. I, I liked the game right from the beginning. I'm glad you didn't quit, and you're still here, and let's see your rating here as of now is 827 and in pennsylvania for regular rated top 100 women's you are number 43 as of now but with your new rating you will go a little bit higher close to number 40 in, in pennsylvania and at age 17 in united states well you are close to like 60 or 50. your number 65 but with your new rating you will be with 827 you will be like close to number 52 so close to 50 so congratulations on your accomplishment thank you and how hard it was for you to get your rating to get into top 40 uh, women's uh, top fi close to top 50 for age 17 how much did you work? How much chess did you hours practice? Did you put in tournaments? Well, when I f my first tournament, my rating went really high, and then after because I was provisional, and after that, it started fluctuating a lot, and I and then now it's pretty solid around the same spot. Um, yeah, just how many how many hours did you put in? Like weekly or monthly or daily or a lot. Probably at first, and then it started to get more. So you are one of the lucky students because you have chess in the school full time. You don't have to stay after school. You don't need to hire a private coach, right? You you have chess full time, you, and is that played a huge role? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So let's see now if we can. find the game that you played at Princeton Day School maybe here we go so in this game you be white and you played a very beautiful game um, so you started out with e4 and your opponent played c5 what's the name of this opening Sicilian Sicilian defense very good and play d6 and now d4 so why did you play d4 so if I take the pawn I can take with the knight so you wanted to have a knight in the center and you're fighting for the center which your opponent did and you have a central I mean you have a knight in the center and the knight in the central controls a lot of squares, squares. so you want to have your knight in the center yes absolutely black play day six knight c3 you continue to it development of your pieces following the basic principles knight f6 and right away you pushed e5 what 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 your thoughts when you pushed e5 what what was the plan behind it what, 
What's the idea? I wanted to kick the knight out because that's a good square for the knight. So you wanted to attack the knight and now the knight doesn't have a good square because he can't go to, to g4 because you will take with the queen, right? Mm -hmm. He can't go to h5 because of the same reason this queen controls the diagonal. So either way he goes backward, which is doesn't want to go backward, or he goes to d5 like in the game. But then you will just capture and what kind of pawns are this? Double. Double pawns. Are they weak or strong? Weak. Double pawns are weak because they cannot protect each other. So it was a good opening for you. And after that you just play bishop d3. So why did you put the bishop on the square? Because the knight isn't defending the square anymore. The h7 square. Okay. And in the same time with bishop d3 you were preparing what? Castling. Castling. And now look at this active two bishops. You have a very beautiful knight in the center. Uh, the queen is ready to join to the party on the king side. So all your pieces are lined up towards the king side. Black played bishop c5 was the idea what he wants to do. Obviously attacking. he's attacking your knight. And you played knight f3. Did you think about playing knight f5 during the game? Yes, but I thought he would kick me out with the pawn. He would kick you out with the pawn. And then you have two options here. One is knight g7 check. And if you place... First of all, if he pushes g6, what kind of squares they get weaker? And what kind the black squares. The black squares. So all these squares are really, really weak. So knight g7 checking here and now you could play bishop h6 protecting your knight and threatening double check and winning the queen it's a little bit tricky if black plays king g8 because the knight has no squares where to move but white has still has a, a strong attack and you could play h4 h5 you could play for f4 f5 and you could just long castle if right the problem for black is king and the pieces in the back rank undeveloped uh, knight f3 wasn't a wasn't a bad move. You had two options here, knight f5 and knight f3. You picked knight f3, safe and sound. Black played knight c6 developing, and now you played h3. So, did you think about castling? Yes. And why, I why did you play h3 and why didn't castle? It was just a waiting move, basically, but I now that I realize I should have castled. So... W you, you were waiting for for what? Him to castle. So you were waiting for black to castle. And now let's see why. Why did you wait for black to castle? Because I did a thing called the classic bishop sacrifice. The classic bishop sacrifice. So what happens if bishop takes h7? King takes h7. How is the king? It's more open, open and exposed. So you can attack the king, right? Now we see that the knight on f6 it's missing it doesn't protect on h7 doesn't protect the king in general so the king is much more vulnerable weaker after the bishop sacrifice the king gets out it, it's much weaker and after knight g5 check king g8 you played queen h5 threatening Checkmate. queen h7 mate so the only way for black is to play rook e8 and now you follow it up with queen takes f7 check king h8 and now you bring the queen back to h5 check followed by queen h7 check king f8 queen h8 check king e7 and queen f7 queen g7 checkmate 
and absolutely beautiful. Congratulations on your game. Thank you. And here we're just gonna go back and say that you could uh, you could also short castle, short castle, and you will have exactly the same line with uh, king. If if he plays king g8, you will have the same line, right? Queen takes f7, and queen h5, and queen h7, queen g8 check, and queen g7 checkmate. Maybe. We could mention here in the game that black could have played king g6 check and did you calculate this line during the game? I thought about it but I I didn't really remember what to do. Mm -hmm. So here the king is exposed and white always has these two candidates moves of, of queen d3 check which is a it probably is the first move that comes to your mind and also h4 with the idea of h5 to force the king to move to h6 on the same diagonal with your bishop so if you will play h4 then knight takes e5 h5 and king f6 and you yes you have this fork or you could play queen d3 but then f5 and again the king runs away again knight king e6 king d6 and you don't have this you don't you can bring the bishop into the game and the king uh, the king escapes he's safe and sound so may that's why you should have castled so when you castle and king h7 check and king g6 now when you play h4 the rook could join to the party later on if he plays rook aj then queen d3 and now you could take on f7 with triple fork and if rook aj the problem is you're threatening h5 and there is no way to stop h5 also you could play queen d3 check and knight h7 bishop g5 and rook e1 this is absolutely beautiful too now that you castled the rook could join to the party so you, you could go for the straight attack with queen d3 check obviously if you place king h6 on, your, on the same diagonal right with the bishop then you just move the knight away and this this is absolutely crushing right this is this cover attack and a fork and you I don't even want to, I don't even think you need the uh, to capture the queen here I think uh, you could just play for a checkmate so remember guys when you want to do the classic bishop sacrifice you want to have yes your bishop line up against the king against the pawn on h7 if you white and to have the g5 square available so that's mean you gotta have the square for your knight line up with the bishop and and with the knight so you could sacrifice the bishop and the knight could come to g5 and then you could bring the queen to h5 Congratulations again and we wish you good luck uh, in your chess career and I'm really proud of your accomplishments. Thank you. You're welcome.